Yeah, I mean, I think um, where we came involved with the project, it was, it was originally conceived by Michael Hurst, who's uh, our writer, our creator. Uh, he has written every single episode of The Vikings so far, which is spectacular unto itself. Um, and it's, it's just, it's a story, you know, The Vikings, everybody knows a little bit about them, but there's just so much material and so much depth there. And the way he developed some of the characters in the initial uh, conception of the stories, it just felt like something that was going to be commercial, that people would uh, fall in love with, and something that we could sell internationally around the world. And that was, we just felt it had the bones for a, a great series. The, the challenges, of course, are fairly uh, obvious on the Irish side, especially. Uh, they pull together a world-class production. The, it's staggering to understand really what goes on. Uh, you know, we have only a few boats, but you see 120 boats. So, even the logistics of doing water scenes and things like that—it's just gorgeous. And, and the sets, uh, the wardrobe, Joan Bergen's wardrobe is just beyond compare. And it's expensive, right? I mean, a, the challenge is just raising that amount of money. It's a big expensive undertaking. So. And, but the success of it around the world must be gratifying. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Everywhere you go. Uh, do we have questions for yeah. the press? Yeah. If not, it's time to go break it like black. I love it. All right. Great. Thank you, everybody. Thanks. Thanks. Part of the, the feeling of the Biba boys was that they, they didn't want to hide. They wanted to be out in front, and there were no apologies and take no prisoners. And the colors, the the Seek colors played very large and bright and strong, and we tried to portray that and, and give it style at the same time and something different. And were these, are, are these all like off the rock suits or are these suits that you made? Or they were built, some were built in India, some were built here, some were off the rack. It was a, a little mix of everything, really. A, a collection yeah. of everything, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And what was the most challenging part of it all for you? Um, it, luckily for me, I, I was brought in and embraced by the uh, members of the Sikh culture and the Sikh community, and uh, Deepa's uh, had a, a great team that uh, helped me to try and uh, bridge that gap between Canada and India, really, and uh, we uh, hopefully achieved that, but that was, that was a big challenge. Do we have questions from the assembled press? Congratulations on the award. Enjoy the rest of your evening. You get one early, so you don't have to <laughs> right. worry about anything it's over. from yeah. here on in. <laughs> Cheers. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, one of the biggest challenges is that we could not go to Afghanistan to record sound there. So we had to get sounds of the country that were valid. So we had to get the right language, which is what Barry did. <laughs> and uh, we had to get the right guns, and we had to get the right vehicles. And uh, so we had to kind of source the world, all, all our colleagues for the vehicles and the guns and stuff, we had to source the world for those. And then Barry had to get a Pashtun uh, loop group in, which were ass assorted people who were not actors, so they did the voices. So that was one, one challenge. Yeah, because you, you have to be uh, uh, culturally correct, mm -hmm. I guess, in terms of all yeah. that, which you know, is the kind of thing that people will really notice if yeah. you aren't. Yeah, we also had military advisors who could double check the language that was used it's because we know that one of the big audiences are going to be soldiers or people in the armed forces um, and by the way those people love seeing the film they're so thrilled that it was made um, but we, they, the language had to be correct and how long is the process because it sounds months. really involved <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think we were on it editing about three months and then there was another month of mixing so Around four months. Four to five months. Did yeah. two temp mixes. Too. Oh, oh yeah, we did two temp mixes <laughs> as a as a prep for them. So. And but were the, there any sounds that you simply couldn't source and that you had to recreate somehow and find? You know, you always hear stabbing sounds they make. You know, with that's what we do in the Foley studio. We do <laughs> all the stabbing and the guns and the the stuff that we just we just have the props for that. <laughs> The other thing that I want to say, though, is it's a huge film, and it was mixed in Dolby Atmos, which is like this huge, new, kind of bangled way of, of mixing a film and making it sound fuller. Right. And bigger. And that's a, that's a very new technology? Yes. Yeah. The yeah. last couple of years. So when you're going to see some of the larger movies now with the speakers and the ceiling. Right. 
Uh, do we have questions from the assembled press? It's, it's your time to whoop it up then. You've already won. Congratulations. Yeah, you're off this way. Please help me welcome for achievement in makeup, Sid Armour, Amour and Jennifer Gould. Congratulations for Room. Uh, you know, this is a movie uh, that everyone's been talking about since uh, it premiered at the Toronto International Film Festival. Um, when it really started to lift off at the festival and become, you know, the, the film everyone was talking about, how did that make you feel? Oh, like finally. We work on all these pictures that have like, all this great momentum and then they just go away. <laughs> And so it was one of those ones where you think, I finally got to work on one that someone knows. <laughs> <laughs> and for you, yeah? Yeah, this time I saw it at TIFF, and it was the same moment. It's like, is this even going to get made? Will it be on a big screen? Wow, it's at TIFF. You know, oh, I'm so happy for everybody because Lenny, our director, was yeah. really something special, and I adore him, and I'm just, I'm happy for him because he, he deserves this. It was, it was a great film. So can you tell proud. can you tell me about your collaboration with him and you know in terms of of what he would ask you for and how you might work with him Absolutely um, one of the things that I love about Lenny is that he loves makeup <laughs> and I love makeup and he would send me emails on Sunday night and I'd be like great because on Sunday night I'm still thinking about makeup too for Monday morning and um uh, Bree and I would talk a lot about what it was that we wanted to accomplish on a daily basis. And um, Lenny is very um, sensitive and open person, and he really respects every department. Yeah. And he would, you know, listen to our reasoning, and um, you could bring anything to the table for him. He's um, he's just an amazing person, and so um, I, I, yeah, that, that was my experience working with Lenny, it was amazing. Yeah. He, he looked to us for our professional opinion, mm -hmm. and I thought that was amazing, because he was all heart in the project. I first met with him at a little luncheon, and I, I just fell in love with him. He was just yeah. everything I hoped a great director would be, and then he actually listened to my opinion. He didn't micromanage us, he completely trusted us, um, and you know, it, it was fantastic to work with him. Do we have questions from the assembled press? It's your time to whoop it up then. Uh, tell me a little bit, uh, have you worked with Arno for a long time? No, this is our first film together. I, uh, I come from the IMAX 70mm 3D world. Right. Uh, this is my first feature doc. That's a film that I started in 2006 and gave up on Frank Fink. Our producers found the money uh, thanks to a French co-producer. And Alno came on board as a director of photography and then we had to spend years out in Cambodia and Vietnam. So. Um, this is really, you know, he's the most deserving individual, I must say. Now, you say that you gave up hope in sort of the middle part of there, but then you go back and you worked on this for years. Uh, what is it that keeps you going once you decide to do, make a film like this? Uh, producers. <laughs> I mean, they, they, they sort of saved us in the sense that I wrote a film initially about the last of the elephant shaman, the people on the borders of Cambodia and Vietnam who could speak to the, the elephant spirits, as it were. And unfortunately, by the time we raised most of the money, they had all died. So we went back, did additional research, and found the last one living in the country and uh, managed to just squeeze in. Wow. wow. Uh, yeah, if you had waited another couple of years, or if the money had taken a bit longer, this may not have happened. Yeah. No, serendipity, but also producers just not giving up. <laughs> Do we have uh, questions from the collected press? We will thank you then and let you enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you. When you're putting together a, a, a film like this, doing visual effects for a film like this, what's more important to you? Are the, is it the effects that you know people will notice, or is it the stuff that is in the film that enhances the film but is not necessarily meant for us to notice? Definitely. The stuff up to the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's definitely the work that people don't notice because that's what we're most proud of, honestly, uh, is that's the kind of work we all love to do. It's the, it's the hardest work to do, but it's also the most satisfying. And, and what kind of things do you mean when you say that? Uh, we do things like you know, set extension, which that's a fairly simple one. Right. Uh, a lot of stuff that we do, we've done so much makeup fixing and uh, additions and things that we can't, you can't get for real. Like, yeah. uh, because it's too dangerous or it's too... Uh, 
too time consuming is one thing. Or when people smoke, the clouds of smoke coming uh, out of the nose. There's also yeah. genitalia removal sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not in this film. No, not in this film. No, no, no. Are there, are there outtakes we don't know about? Is that um, what that is? Yeah. Um, I'll keep that one. And, uh, <laughs> what kind of schedule are you on when you're working on a film like this, which is a big film that must have had, I would guess, a lot of, uh, well, judging by the amount of people on yes. the stage, uh, there must have been a fair amount of visual effects in here. Uh, how long, what's the schedule? How long do you work on it? Uh, we, start, we start in pre-production and with the uh, filmmakers and figuring out with Paul, we worked out what was going to be needed for the show. We were there f during production and we were going for a good year after production finished. Right. And just, I think we're, we're over 200 shots in this show. Wow, wow. And it wasn't shot in Afghanistan. It was shot in Jordan, right? Uh, we, Jordan and Winnipeg. In Jordan, well, and of course. Yeah. The, the sister uh, cities of yeah. Jordan. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, but were you in Jordan? I was in Jordan. Uh, my colleague Jeff was in uh, Winnipeg and up in Shiloh, where we shot as well. Wow. And uh, so that, that, the film was shot everywhere. Jordan was three, four weeks. Right. Four weeks. Right. That, that stood in well for Afghanistan. Uh, do we have questions from the Assembled Press? Uh, you're free to enjoy the rest of your evening. Now you're all winners, so uh, have fun. Please help me welcome uh, for achievement in overall sound, uh, Lou Sok. Uh, so Lakowski, Ian Rankin, Joe Morrow, uh, James uh, Bostable, 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 uh, Stephen Muir, uh, Jack Kareen, and Andre uh, Azubo. Azubel, you know, it's been a long day already. Uh, congratulations for Hyena Road. So we'll take some photos. Perfect, everybody. Straight ahead and just a little closer, please. A little tighter, a little tighter. Just a little Yeah. Now I'll ask a couple of questions. So we just had a bunch of people who are Hyena Road down here who accepted uh, an award for uh, sound. Uh, what exactly was it? Editing. Sound editing. Yeah. What's the difference between what they do and what you do? If one of you wants to grab the microphone and... So the editing people uh, find the sound, they, or they go out and record it, and um, they place it, and then uh, this team here, some of us record the Foley, some of us record the actors in um, ADR, and... Uh, the rest of us uh, blend the sound of the sound effects, the dialogue, the ADR, the Foley, and, and the music score together to create that final right. thing. And we do it in a movie theater type environment. Yeah. And, and at what stage do you come in? Are you in at the very beginning with a plan as to what the whole thing will sound like when it's done? Or do you come in sort of a little closer to the end once things have been Paul, worked on? Paul spoke to us just before embarking on shooting. Uh, because um, we, he asked us about coming over to record some weapons and do some things like that. So we know we're going to work on the film at that early stage, but really we don't get involved until um, when the shoot wraps, picture editing gets going full time, and then we start feeding sounds to the edit room. And then um, around the time picture gets locked, that's when the whole army gets going. And then everyone, with a film that busy, there are many people who... Take, one person takes weapons, one person takes vehicles, and all that kind of stuff. Who did weapons? Uh, other crew. Oh, the other, oh, yeah. Uh, well, uh, do we have questions from the assembled press? Now it's time for you to get out of here and enjoy the rest of your evening. Right. Jamie, take a, have a stand to the microphone. Uh, congratulations on this. Thank you. So you knew that you had won this a couple of days ago, right? Uh, it was announced? I think it was. Five weeks ago. Six oh, five weeks. weeks. Yeah. So, you, so you knew. So you, you can roll in here feeling pretty confident about things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and um, it, what do you think it is a, a, about this movie, about your work in this movie, that the Academy recognized? Um, well, I guess I guess making making any feature, regardless if it's your first or second, third, whatever, it's a challenging uh, endeavor. Um, becomes exponentially more difficult when you shoot in a communist dictatorship with uh, no film infrastructure. But I think a lot of it has to rest on uh, Rossif's shoulders. Uh, he really does carry the film, and he was a great collaborator on this. Yeah. And was he involved from the beginning, or did he come on later? No, we were we were uh, four weeks out from uh, from going to camera. I was over in Laos. I was in Laos for nearly. I was just over five months and uh, dealing with the government and trying to, to get permission to actually shoot there and figuring it all out. 
Um, but yeah, we're four weeks out. We had approached a number of other actors, um, higher profile actors, and people were interested. But when it came down to actually flying to the other side of the world with a first time director, uh, they pulled out, or they just got cold feet, I guess. And uh, Jason Knight, our Canadian casting director, suggested Rossif. I got on Skype with him uh, for a couple hours one night. He auditioned, um, and uh, he was on a plane very shortly after, yeah. And uh, now I couldn't see him, anybody else playing that role except exactly. for him. Yeah, yeah. And and were there was there ever a, a question in your mind that maybe we should just you know pull up stakes here and move it somewhere else? I mean, there must be some other place that kind of would have the same look, but might be a little easier to shoot in. There's always there's always compromise when making a film. Um, one of the major set police pieces takes place on an island, and there's no shortage of islands in Southeast Asia, but there's something very unique and ominous and oppressive about the islands uh, uh, on the Mekong River, uh, just north of Cambodia. Um, it's no, there's no crystal clear waters and you know bleached white sandy beaches. It's uh, you know it's a murky river and there are, I don't know, giant catfish in it. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have questions from the assembled press? Hey, enjoy the rest of your night. Thanks, Jamie. <laughs> So uh, this is a, a big award for uh, a, a short film, right? It was a short animated film. What does this do for you? Uh, shit, I don't know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like right now, right now it's gonna get us drunk. But uh, uh, Ho hoping it it opens up some uh, some doors for development of our next project. So yeah. we have another short slash children's book that we are that's fomenting and. Right. Uh, and a, a feature that well, it was a short in our minds, and now we've started thinking that it's a feature. Right. And so, hopefully, that'll get some people's attention with some co-development or financing. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do we have questions from the assembled press? You go enjoy your evening, kids. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You're coming this way. You're coming this way. Congratulations on the award. Thank you. Uh, this is uh, the Golden Screen Award, so that means it's voted on by fans of the show. So that that that's must be exciting and gratifying for you. I, I think it's the best award that we you know we're, we've been lucky this year. I think this is the sixth honor that we've had for the Amazing Race. Uh, and I don't know if we've ever had one show at Insight that's won six awards in one season and one on, on one show, but uh, the one you really like the most is the one that uh, uh, is from the fans. Um, you know, it speaks to the reason that we're still on the air and why we do what we do. We do it for the fans, not for... My father used to say, you can't eat awards. <laughs> uh, why do you think it is that the show has remained so popular? What's the core element of it that keeps people coming back week after week, season after season? Um, I think the core thing, uh, and I, I, I think you could all chip in on this, but I think the number one thing is that we make people feel proud of being Canadian. Um, you know, we're a wildly diverse country and we put people on our amazing race that uh, really represent. And, uh, you know, we go in and we put uh, communities in Canada on a national stage and uh, they just roll out the uh, red carpet for us. And, and uh, I think it's also interesting to see how Canadians travel outside of Canada mm -hmm. and how they behave differently than perhaps some of uh, our members to the south and some other people that uh, we've seen how they travel around the world. So I think that's been one of the winning formulas as well. Do we have questions from the assembled press? It looks like you're free to go enjoy your Canadian Screen Award uh, for the rest Thank of the evening. Much. Thank you very much, you guys. Uh, how, do, how does it feel to, uh, to uh, leave an award winner? It, it feels good. We're very excited. This is the first film that Zach Russell's ever directed, so it's really important to us that he was appreciated yeah. for this. And tell me about this and, and, and why this was, uh, for you, a, a project that made you make the leap into directing. Um, hi, you know, I've been... Oh, hello. Okay. Uh, I've been making theater for a while, and, uh, you know, you make theater, and a few people see it, and then it's over, and it's a lot of hard work, and so we really wanted to do something that we could show for more than a week right. <laughs> and uh, yeah I was just working a lot with Kayla Lorette who's beside me here and uh, she has this weird thing where she always is this beautiful woman who's playing older men and so that was kind of the germ idea for our film that I know you've all seen so thank you. <laughs> <laughs> They've all seen and loved and that's it. Thank you for your votes. Yeah, do, do we have questions from the assembled press? Yeah right in the back there. So how did uh, Julian Richie see it at all? Was he like, it's obviously 
The mask is a big part of it. Yeah. If it wasn't him, there would be no movie. Yeah, so, so in the film, I wear a prosthetic of a man's face for the most part. And uh, we wanted a face that was very distinct, and we thought of Julian Richings. And so Zach Russell and I put together a teaser trailer with kind of a, a, a lower, like, not as good prosthetic piece, but to present to him, to ask him if he would do the project. And so we made this very creepy trailer where I was wearing his face and then just sent it, hoping that he wouldn't call the cops. Uh, and then he was very kind and agreed to do the film, and he was incredible and sweet and is so supportive of, of emerging artists and is really... Such a wonderful man. It was great. Any other questions? You are now free to enjoy the rest of your evening as award winners. Congratulations. Uh, congratulations on the award. Uh, tell us uh, a little bit about how uh, you arrived on the subject matter for your short doc. Because short docs are, are uh, a, a different beast than making a feature in the sense that you have to be very uh, economical with your storytelling and with your, uh, with your ideas in them. A strong, you know, a central theme. Tell me about what it was about this one that, that made you uh, think this would be a good subject. Uh, well, it started as a concept, um, and the concept was to encourage apostasy, as I was saying. I, I trying to get people to, trying to remind people it's never too late to abandon your faith. So uh, this was sort of a, a message to my mother and my grandmother and anybody else who, who's in that same situation. So uh, for, for me, it sort of started like, how can we gently sort of show people it's, it's, it's not so bad? And uh, we kind of went from there. And what was your grandmother and mother's reaction to the film? Uh, not, not what I know, unfortunately. So it's, it's, it's all well and good, but uh, you know, we, we know what we like, that, that sort of thing. Do we have questions from the assembled press? Saul, it's time for you to enjoy your night as an award winner. Congratulations on the award. Uh, Alan, I, I, I'm a, a friend of yours on Facebook. I see your posts ab about uh, this film, or I've seen your posts about this film and others. Uh, you seem to be uh, enjoying uh, like a, a renaissance these days of sorts, uh, uh, from judging by the reaction that your films are getting. Would you agree? Well, renaissance means reborn. I would have to have been born. I would, yes, it's, a, it's the pinnacle of my career. I would agree with that, yes. This, yeah. It's my best film, and good stuff happens. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, tell us a little bit about how you arrive on, you've made a lot of documentaries, on how you arrive on a subject matter for your, for your films. Well, oh, how do I generally arrive? Generally speak, and then on this one as well. Generally, I just come up with something... Because I have to make a film because I have to make a living. And I would say most of my films have had questionable ideas. But <laughs> I knew I could make good films from questionable ideas. Yeah. This is the first film that was a good idea. <laughs> and thus. Yeah. And Peter, will you come? Uh, you know, I've known Alan for a long time, and we ran into each other at TIFF, and we bounced around some ideas to work on, and, uh, you know, two years later, it's been an incredible ride, and uh, in this particular case, Steve Fonio is like uh, an unbelievable uh, human being, and uh, it's like a human highlight reel for disaster, you know? Yeah, yeah. Do we have questions from the Assemble Press? Oh. Yeah, in the back there, yeah. Yes. Um, you know, Steve came to Toronto, that it's, um, he, he came to Toronto from Vancouver and because he had no ID, all he had was a Xerox of a birth certificate, so he came on a 76-hour Greyhound Holy bus crap. to come to the premiere, so I think he would have been happy with anything, just not to be in a bus anymore, <laughs> but, but he, he got a standing ovation at the, at the premiere, and I think that's really all that matters to him. Yeah. Any other questions? Gentlemen, enjoy the rest of your evening, and you're coming off this way. Please help me welcome Best Performance by an Actor in a Continuing Leading Dramatic Role, Ari Millen for Orphan Black. Uh, congratulations. Thank you very much. Uh, obviously emotional for you to win this. Can you, we, we heard a bit of your speech, but the, the sound is on and off in here. Can you tell us why? <coughs> Uh, because it was very unexpected. Uh, first of all, you know, 
I think you're in it for the wrong reasons if you're doing it just for this. And I think so much of the time, the greatest victory of all is just getting the job, let alone getting a recurring role, let, let, let alone a, a lead role. So it all kind of happened uh, before I knew it, and I, you know, I'm still catching up on it. So um, it was very unexpected, very humbling, and uh, yeah, it's just it's really exciting. I don't what, know. <laughs> why? Why do you think uh, that audiences have embraced Orphan Black in the way that they have? I mean, I, I think it. it, it it stems from the top. I think that's it's the storytelling, and I think it's the incredible work uh, done by the actors. But I think, for the most part, it's a, it's a show about uh, clones, and I think every clone kind of uh, someone can relate to every single clone. So it can it can draw in a larger uh, audience more so than a normal show. I think. And this is, I guess, technically the first Candy Award. I like that. That's yeah. cool. Yeah. Will you call it? Will you I, show I, it? No, uh, will, this is will the you, first candy. <laughs> will you be, when people come over to the house, you'll be like, have you seen the candy? <laughs> you will now. <laughs> <laughs> Do we have questions from the press? All right. It is now your Thank night to go whoop it up. Thanks a lot. Have fun. Please help me welcome for adopted screenplay, Emma Donahue, winner for Room. Congratulations. Uh, we'll, we'll ask you to uh, go down to the microphone. Um, uh, well, congratulations on this. Uh, when, when you were sitting at home writing the book, or wherever it is that you, that, that you choose to write. On uh, a treadmill. On a treadmill, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Is that true? Yes. Really? Why would I lie about such a thing? Well, yeah, treadmill desk. It's the way of the future. It is full. Um, it, when 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 you were on your treadmill, could you ever have imagined, you know, the, the series of events? I know, you know, at TIFF, I saw an interview with you where you were very excited, you know, about the idea of the film premiering there. It's gone on to have a, a life of its own. Uh, tell me about how you're feeling tonight. Oh, it's extraordinary. This feels like the perfect, uh, you know, ending party for a year like I've never had before. Um, no, I, I never imagined Room would do this well, but um, as soon as I finished the book and started writing the screenplay, I did think they should make this in Canada. So every time I met the filmmakers, every conversation we had, I said, make it in Toronto, make it in Toronto. So I'm so, so happy that this ended up being an Irish-Canadian co-production and that we got to draw on the wealth of Canadian talent that we're seeing tonight. A great deal of the book uh, is, is uh, internal. And the film is not necessarily that. Uh, can you tell me about the challenges of, of adapting the, the book, which is a much different thing than the screenplay, uh, but still maintaining the integrity of the story? Well, I knew that cinema had a lot to offer in telling the story as well because it's all about perspective and point of view. So I knew that in the film you wouldn't see exactly what's going on in Jack's head, but you would see him looking. And that also it would, this film would give my characters bodies, not just minds, and it would give a child actor in particular a chance to give the child narrator of the book a, a physicality. There's so many scenes where Jacob Tremblay puts down one little foot and it's just more evocative than anything I could have written. So it's wonderful to see the character of the mother, Ma, really step center stage in this film and also for the, yeah, the, the physical warmth and affection and playfulness between them really comes strongly forward too. Are you on the treadmill right now working on something else? <laughs> <laughs> Always, yes. I'm, um, I, I'm turning to children's fiction actually because really? having enjoyed the point of view of a child in room, I'm really enjoying now writing for children. Right. Do we have questions from the assembled press? Uh, Emma Donahue, it is your time to enjoy your evening you as an award winner. Much. Thank you. Please help me welcome performance by an actor and a supporting role winner, Nick Serino for Sleeping Giant. Mm. Right, once you're right, Nick, really quick. Thanks, bud. Like 
and we'll get you over by the microphone now. Uh, congratulations on this. Uh, what does winning this award uh, for uh, this film mean to you? Uh, for me personally, I think that it means just to keep uh, going. It's an overwhelming feeling. My whole body's still tingling. There's uh, just so much processing through my mind right now. It's uh, absolutely incredible. I can't even think straight right now. It's well, it's an interesting movie because there was uh, like 70 hours. I'd heard, I think Andrew Sabadina, the, your director, told me they shot an enormous amount of footage. Uh, what was that experience like? Uh, I, for me, it was amazing. It was just one month of uh, hanging out with two of my buddies and doing absolutely whatever. Sometimes they would come and give us a pair of golf keys or something to do, and they would just film us all the time. It's just all real experiences, having real fun. Right. Do we have questions from the assembled press? Anyone? No? All right. You know what, Nick? Enjoy the rest of your night. Yeah, for sure. As an award winner. So, so congratulations on this. Uh, it, it, we couldn't hear the whole speech. We, it cut out after, oh, shit. Uh, and so uh, congratulations on, on, on being the first person to swear on the, uh, on the broadcast. Um, did you refer to it as a candy? Did you thank them for the candies? Yeah, I, I think I said it was the best candy ever. <laughs> Good. Well, um, uh, what does it mean to you uh, to win this? Uh, to the mic, yeah, maybe you can get to it. What does it mean to you guys uh, to win this award? Uh, uh, for us, it's, it's just such a big deal because I think that we, I think that maybe we felt like the underdog coming into, you know, with competing with great shows like uh, Rick Mercer in 22 Minutes, you, you know, we're the, the new kids on the block and, uh, it's, um, it's a, it's a weird show and, um, <laughs> and we're very weird in it. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, um, you know, we, we're all very proud of our work and we're proud of the show and it's just, uh, it's, it's overwhelming how, how great it feels to, to be acknowledged. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have questions from the assembled, uh, press? Come on, people. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, how, how, how does it work? Tell me how sketch comedy works. No. How does sketch comedy work? Yeah. I think, I think you just you open that door I, I asked by that asking question. that question. Pat, so. Pat Thornton, you are a, a, a very well-renowned sketch comedian. What's the basics of sketch? It's just, it's just that you write it first, <laughs> and then you do it. That's how we do it. Somebody I, writes it, and then we say it, and we I, do it. I'm sure the kids at home are learning from you Am right I now. That down. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just wanted to mention that uh, there's been a lot of flack about sketch comedy not having enough diversity in it, and I just wanted to say that Sunnyside accomplished that, and I'm very proud to be a part of such a great cast and be included. And Kevin Vidal is not here, but I think it's, I think Sunnyside producers were so great at making sure that that happened. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the show. Congratulations on those. And enjoy the rest of your night. You can go whoop Thank it up guys. now. Thank you so much. Please help me welcome uh, Fan Choice Award Yannick Bisson. Please come on and uh, have a... Oh, we'll put you right here for photos first. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Congratulations. Thank you very much. Give it a kiss again. Ten years. Yeah, well, we were talking, we'll put you over at the microphone now. We were talking uh, beforehand, and you were saying that this show, Murdoch Mysteries, is almost more popular in the ninth season than it has been before. Why does it keep growing, do you think? Um, it's hard to say, you know, I've said this a million times, every person that I talk to has a different thing that appeals to them about the show. Uh, and, and it really is amazing. We're in our ninth season, we're up over uh, a million four weekly, uh, which, is, which is really great. And, um, you know, typically shows <laughs> sort of die after four or five seasons. You try to keep it together, you try to keep it together. I've been waiting for my Hopefully, next job for five years now. I don't know. <laughs> and you were, 
uh, saying in your speech, you know, like the, the idea when you took this on, there's a period piece set in Toronto, you're like, ah, oh, this will never take. And it has. Um, what has surprised you most over the course of time that you've been working on this show? Uh, I think there's a couple of things. Uh, uh, the, the thing that shocked me the most would be uh, that tonight uh, in France, we will have four million viewers watching the show dubbed in French. Uh, so, I mean, it's, <laughs> who'd have ever thought that would happen? I, I don't know. Uh, do we have questions from the assembled press? Pardon? Ah, oui, ça fait. Um, yeah, there's a microphone up here if you want to, if you want to be heard. Oh, yeah. C'est correct, je comprends. Um, C'est uh, uh, vraiment, vraiment étonnant d'être ici ce soir. Uh, je suis... Je suis très fier de toute mon équipe et euh, toute la gang avec qui je travaille. Euh, je suis tellement fier de l'industrie au Canada en général. Et, et, et c'est vraiment en forme et il euh, n'y a personne de plus content que moi. Merci. Anyone else? You don't need to be dubbed for the French version of the show. I can't speak nearly as fast as those guys do, though. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, go ahead. Well, wouldn't you like to know? Um, na Napkin Man, we, we did two successful seasons. Um, I, I actually won a CSA last year. I couldn't be here for it. Uh, we're waiting to see. Uh, it's doing very well, and people are very happy. And um, I actually have technicians and people that come up to me and talk to me, A, about their mom wanting an autograph, and B, about their kid wanting an autograph. So can't be all bad. <laughs> Oui, j'ai aucune idée qu'est-ce qu'il y a au juste euh, en France qui, est, qui, qui, euh, qui amène euh, tellement de gens à, à notre émission. Um, je ne sais pas du tout, uh, uh, mais ils sont vraiment, vraiment généreux. Et uh, surtout, uh, à l'Internet, uh, on, 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 on se parle uh, tous les jours. Il uh, y, y en a des, des milliers, mais uh, c'est pas mal le fun. J'ai la chance à me pratiquer un petit peu. Anyone else? Go enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks, yeah, thank you. Best TV movie or limited series. Uh, Damon Doliveria, uh, Clement Virgo, let me see, some of these names are crossed out. Bill Niven, uh, Ingenue Ellis, Stephen James, and Lyric Bent is here too. So welcome, everybody. Welcome. Uh, congratulations on this. This has been, uh, this has been a, a long journey. Uh, how does it feel to be standing here with a bunch of gold in your hands tonight? <laughs> Um, it, it feels great. It's been a long journey. It's been, um, you know, five years since I read that book and gave it to Damon to read. And it was a long search to find, a, find all the, the right actors. And we found our Amanata in Ash Noelis and, and Shailene Dixon and went out and found our Shakura in, in the Lyric Band. And we found our great partner in, in Bill in uh, Nova Scotia. And Stephen James, who's going to be our, probably one of our biggest rising stars over the next five years or so. So it feels great. And this is a, a, a huge project. I mean, when you read the book, did you at any point say, I'd love, you know, this would be so great. I would love to make this, except, you know, it's, it's, such, uh, it's so big in scope and, and expensive and all those things. Uh, or, and, but did you think it was such an important story it needed to be told? Yeah, I mean, it's a period film, uh, a period piece, and uh, it, was, it was daunting. But I, 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 for us, it just felt like we had to tell that story. We had to tell that, that uh, history, that American history and that Canadian history. And um, even though it was difficult, you know, we had a, a lot of partners that came on board who were just as enthusiastic as we were. And people like CBC and E1 and, and, and uh, BET. Um, so we had a lot of love and, and, and uh, support for this project. And I, there, was a, there was a real sense of wanting to see it come to life. And so we were very, very lucky that way. Yeah, it was it was complicated. It was it was it was you know uh, an arduous shoot. We were in South Africa in forty to forty five degree heat. Then yeah. we took Ingenue to Cape Breton Island, where it was about minus ten to minus twenty. Um, but we persevered, and I feel like there was a sense of grace as we were making this project yeah. every step of the way. You know, there was that that sense of this this was going to happen, and we believed in it. We all believed in it. So you willed it to happen as much as anything yeah. else, I guess, right? Do we have questions from the assembled press? Thank you very much.
<laughs> well, thank you. Yeah, well, thank, thank you, you very much, guys. Thank you. Listen, congratulations. It's a big night and well deserved for you guys. Congratulations. You. Please help me welcome the Cineplex Golden Screen Award for feature film winner uh, Marie Claude Beauchamp for Snow Time. Congratulations. Yep. Uh, and we'll put you at the microphone if we could. Congratulations on this. Thank you. What does winning this award mean to you tonight? Well, um, as I said earlier, it is uh, animation is a tough business, mm -hmm. especially against the big mega studios. So it takes a lot of you know determination to get it out there. But we were super supported. We were uh, we were very very lucky to have with us um, our distributor uh, E1 in Seville that did a super job. And uh, we also went out there and did a whole soundtrack, a record, with Walk Off the Earth, Simple Plan, Celine Dion, Louis-Jean Cormier, um, Marie-Pierre Arthur, marie May, you know, like all these stars yeah. just joined in and sang our songs. Yeah. Not theirs, our songs. <laughs> <laughs> so they really brought it and, and supported the film. And Sony is also accompanying us around the world, every territory. Um, they're releasing the record for everywhere we go with the film. The world is fairly sold, so we're really happy. <laughs> we have a few territories left, but the film has just been out in this Christmas, yeah. so there's still more to come. There's still time. How long a process was it to get this film made? Uh, it was almost a five-year process. Um, it's an adaptation from an existing film, so there was a lot of, ta of care taking into the adaptation, bringing it up to today's uh, values and yeah, yeah. taste and ways of living. Uh, and yet, after that, it was adapting it as well into an animated film, because it was originally a live-action film. And it was so close to the minds and the DNA of the Quebec people that we also had to make sure we would carry that DNA right. into the next film. So there was a lot of care into that part. And then financing was a bit of a challenge. Uh -huh. Yes, we have it a big budget is. for Canada, but a small budget for animation. Right. So there's about a zero less than American films. Just put it in those <laughs> numbers. And, um, and with, that, with that in mind, um, it took us all together about five years to bring it to, to the screen. And, and how do you stay uh, excited about a project over that amount of time? I guess that the, the really our uh, course of, of event uh, that we decided to take was not just to make a, a film, but to support the film with uh, with everything that comes with it when when we go to a children's film. We developed it as an intellectual property, therefore we had a record, so I had to become a music producer, yeah. which I was not, <laughs> a record producer, which I was not, uh, but then we also published three books, uh, did licensing, merchandising, we had seven million quarts of milk in the stores with our characters, <laughs> um, we did all that while we were doing that, so we kept on learning, right. and as you learn, you, you're never, you, you don't want to give up, so you continue on. Do we have questions from the assembled press? I talk so much, I said everything. I think you may have. <laughs> you know what, it's time for you to go have a glass of champagne and enjoy your Thank win. Thank you very much. Um, so congratulations on the award. Congratulations. Um, what do you think it is that uh, has made this show and the movie uh, resonate so much with Canadians? <coughs> it's funny. <laughs> that does have a lot to do there with it, I that, think. Yeah. Um, I, I think that we uh, we just set out to just kind of I think it's the show was authentic. We didn't try to be anything basically because we didn't think anybody was ever going to watch. We thought nobody's going to watch a show but a gas station in Saskatchewan, and so we just we did what we thought was funny because at the end of the day, that's all we we thought we were taking away from this. Let's do 13 episodes of something we thought was funny. And uh, I think people responded to that authenticity. When did you realize that people were paying attention? Yeah, not really till episode one was finished. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, when we, like, we got a lot of attention for a gas giveaway that we did. Right. And we thought, wow, a lot of people were watching that on the news. And then, <laughs> but we still thought there was kind of a marketing thing. And, and it wasn't until episode one aired and the network called us and told us how many people watched. And we were like... And then we thought, well, that's a fluke. <laughs> that was the gas giveaway promotion. The right. numbers will go down, and they just—they never did. They, they just, just never went did. up. 
week yeah, after week. Going up, yeah. uh, do we have uh, questions from the assembled press? I can't see hands. Do we have we questions? questions? They love questions, they people. Love questions. Make one little comment. Okay, please. Um, one of the really cool things about Corner Gas, the movie, is that we made a feature film in theaters, and then it was released across television yeah. platforms. And I think it's a super model because it captures the audience and all of the promotion and it drives them right across. And, and, and we had an incredible audience reach because of that. And, you know, just a lot of people took a lot of risks on how this film was released and, and it really worked. So for them and for our film, we were really happy about that. And will there be more corner gas now? I'll let you answer that, Brent. Yeah. Um, I've, I've always been a big fan of not closing doors. Um, I don't have, you know, any plans for anything, but I always feel if you leave the door open, there's always options, and I'm a big fan of options. All right, we haven't heard from uh, Tara or Eric yet. What, if there is more corner gas coming, what would you like to see your characters do in the next one? Uh, I would like to see my character not, um, not leave this earth. Uh -huh. Um, and when a long-running series happens, and of course the negotiations get so tough because you've got all this behind you, and being at my age, you know, it would be the temptation to have Oscar die. So I hope, <laughs> I hope that, and I hope they make what's ever going to happen, if it's ever going to happen, in time for me to still be able to act in it. <laughs> Tara? Um... I always wanted to see Karen as a cheerleader for the Rough Riders. Um, it was something that I pitched to, to Brent I, at, at least 20 times when I was drunk. Um, it never came to fruition, and now looking back on it, I think I'm quite glad. Um, but I think it would be actually funnier now. I think it wouldn't have been. Yeah, I think it would be. I think it would be funnier now. Yeah. So that was that was my dream for Karen. Well, uh, congratulations, and uh, it's time to celebrate, so you. enjoy your win. The Lifetime Achievement Award winner, Martin Short. Help me Hello. welcome him, everyone. Test uh, one, two. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations on the award. Thank you very much. Uh, what did it feel like sitting in the audience watching the clip reel that sort of encompassed your entire career? It, it, was it moving for you? It must have been. You know, it's a combination of uh, awe-inspiring, moving, and... They picked that clip, you know. <laughs> I think it's, uh, it's all kind of surreal. You know, you, you do this work and it's just your work and yeah. then you, um, you don't really look back in it or live within it. Right. So it's almost like it's not even you up there, especially the older clips. <laughs> Does it bring back, you I know? remember everything. I have a total recall memory. Yeah? Uh, like Mary Lou Henner, you know, <laughs> and... Uh, and so it's, I can remember, there was one thing with the waters hitting me in SCTV, I remember shooting that. I remember uh, with Meg Ryan when we were shooting that, yeah. with, uh, I was on the Jeep and tied off. And I, I remember it all. <laughs> uh, we must have questions from the assembled press for Martin Short. Yeah, yeah uh, go ahead. Uh, Mr. Short, you referenced uh, Donald Trump in your speech. Yes. Do you wish to... Uh, Guess who will win the outcome of that election, and how much money would you wager on that in Canadian dollars? Oh, I'd wager a million Canadian dollars that it will be Hillary Clinton. You know, I mean, everyone likes a freak show for a bit, but um, they're already getting tired of it, and he won't win. He doesn't have a chance of winning. The United States is not um, uh, a country without intellect, and it's certainly not a racist country. Okay. Are yes. the questions yet, Linda? Thank you. Will you come back and host again? Well, I'd have to be asked. <laughs> <laughs> if asked, would you run? Sure. And other questions? Anyone? I can't see you. Yeah, so go I ahead. I mean so much to everyone. Yes, you do. <laughs> thank you so much. Well, yeah, Martin, well, thank you so much. My I, pleasure. It, uh, it's time to celebrate. Time to celebrate. Thank, you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Bye. So congratulations uh, on all the good fortune that came your way today. Thank congratulations you. on everything. I, I can see the ad, the headline tomorrow will be like, Shit's Creek wins a shitload of awards or something like that. Might be not bad. Uh, um, 
But uh, this must be uh, special in a way that it's a, the show is a family affair. It is, uh, you know, it reunites Eugene and Catherine. Uh, it, it, tell me a little bit about how you're feeling right now about this. Well, um, you know, it's, it's pretty amazing. I, I, uh, oh, microphone. Oh, yes, that's right. You'd think being in the business, <laughs> I, would, uh, I would know that. Well, you know what I can do? Yeah. Take this out, and that way we can, we can kind of, you know, pass it around. That would be good. Um, I don't know. How does it feel? It feels like pretty amazing. You know, we, 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 we work very hard, all of us, to put together a show that we can all be proud of, a kind of show that we would want to watch. We're all into kind of doing, you know, quality work, trying to do as good a job as we can. And, you know, when something like this happens, when people recognize what it is that you're doing and, and want to give you a little nod for it, I think that's kind of nice. I mean, it's just, it's nice. It's, you know, Dan and I have both said it's not what we set out to do. It's not, we don't, you know, we don't do this because, you know, we kind of want to make a splash. It's just, um, you're in it for the work. Yeah, we want to make a funny show. Do we have questions from the assembled press? Linda, go ahead. Here, let me hand you this. <laughs> Well, I mean, it, it's, you know, it, it's, it's great, you know. John was, John was kind of an iconic Canadian funny man, a great actor, you know, just a darling guy to work with and uh, a great friend. And the fact is, I think it is a good name for this award, mm -hmm. you know, getting a candy. I... It, it seemed to sit well tonight. It was yeah, mentioned sure a few times, and it, you know, it may have started out as a bit of a, you know, a bit of a joke, but, you know, by the end of the show, it just seemed, well, that's the name of the award. It's called the candy. The CSA, get yourself a candy. <laughs> okay, well, it was especially sweet seeing a little boy say thank you for the candy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Halloween. Uh, well, what do I think of John Candy? Oh, I'm with Eugene. I think it's set now. I think they can't turn back. Yeah. yeah. I love John. And John, you know, everyone who met him uh, was just fulfilled <laughs> because he would be exactly uh, as you dream he would be. You know, just a lovely, lovely, fun man who'd improvise with anyone and everyone ever on the street. It's open, open and lovely and funny. Yeah. And Dan, how does it, uh, everywhere I go, I see you on uh, bus station, or you know, streetcar stops. I see it, your picture is everywhere. Uh, yeah, you, you live. That's uh, never a good thing. No, no, I love it. How do you feel about that? Uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, it's all sort of, we, we spend so much time, um, you know, shooting the show and writing the show and we're in edit suites editing the show that we're not out on the streets a lot. Right, right. So yeah. fortunately, I've been sheltered from a, a lot of that. Um, apologies to those people who have been inundated. Um, no, it's incredible. Again, for us, the, we set out to make a great show yeah. and all the frills, all the, you know, the, whether it's a poster or, or, or tonight, it's, it's all just icing on the cake because... The, the satisfaction of knowing that we've made something quite special is, is really what's, what matters most to us. So, Emily, you had a line, I think it was on the first episode uh, of the first season. Uh, and it was, uh, uh, for me, a line that I th maybe wasn't written in the script. Or it didn't seem funny when it was written, but it was, a, is it about the doors? And it was, it made me laugh. For about a week afterwards, it was the delivery, it was, uh, everything about that line delighted me. And uh, so thank you for that. I don't I think I've ever told you. That's your favorite it, line. It was my favorite line of that. the entire series, and I don't, I can't tell you why. It's one of my all-time favorite it, lines, too. And the line was, if this is about doors. <laughs> It's fantastic. Yeah. It was fantastic. Yeah. And thank you. I, I, you gave me much uh, pleasure. Uh, go ahead. Hi, is there going to be a 
we're, we're yeah we've had um, uh, we've we've had a couple of get-togethers uh, the cast and uh, you know we're talking about it. It, it it was brought to our attention this is the 40th anniversary sure. of the show the third the 33rd anniversary of it not being on the air <laughs> um, but um, you know we're talking we're gonna see what we can you know come up with to you know help celebrate the Do, occasion. What, what form would it take? Would it be uh, a, a look back at the classic sketches? Would there be new things? Would it be a mix of both or? You know, to be, to be honest, I, I, we don't honestly right. know what it is. Obviously, I think there would be, you know, a lot of clips from the show because that really is the reason to do, you know, the show. I think uh, looking back at some of the great clips, but other than that, it's uh, in terms of what the form is or what the show is, we don't honestly know yet. We've only had a couple of sessions, and one, the first one was, do you think we should do something? And everybody <laughs> said, yeah, it makes sense. I think we could do something. And now we're still kind of talking about it. So we don't honestly know what, what it is, what the form is, what, what we'll be doing on it, or you know, we're just kind of going step by step and hoping we can come up with something before the year ends. Well, I know I, I speak for everybody when I say, do it, make it happen. I want to see that. Yeah. The cast. Yeah, the cast. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, Joe, uh, Catherine, myself, Andrea, uh, Dave, Dave Thomas, Marty, uh, Joe Flaherty. Hopefully Rick. And hopefully, hopefully Rick Moranis. And, um, you know, that's what it is. We're just kind of trying to figure out what it is we want to do. A question yeah. in the back there? Go ahead. Uh, hey, question. By the way, congratulations. You guys know how much I love the Shit's Creek. So congratulations. Uh, question for Catherine O'Hara, if possible. Um, I have to ask you this because it's filling my Facebook feed and on Twitter and everything like that. Uh, apparently Tim Burton has said there's a possible Beetlejuice 2. What are your thoughts? Would you do it? Have you heard this? I wish I could do it, but uh, I haven't heard anything. I met my husband on that movie. He designed the set, so we would both love to be involved. But, uh, you know, I keep hearing, like you, I keep hearing about it every once in a while, but it doesn't seem to go anywhere, but I don't know. I'd love to see it. I'd love to be in it. Me too, so. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Can you do it? Yeah. yeah. We, I think I, I like know to the name that. of the town where it will be shot. <laughs> uh, well, thank you all very much. Congratulations. Uh, an amazing night for you, and uh, we're all thrilled. Go have some champagne. Uh, congratulations on the award. Thank you. Thank you. And yeah, and uh, tell you, you know, th this show uh, every year when I'm down here, uh, 1912. You're, you guys are a regular presence down 1902. here. 1902. 1902. Sorry, 1902. Well, it's late. It's that's the sequel. It's coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 1902 is a, is a, a regular presence down here. Uh, why is it respond? Uh, why have people responded so well? Because it gives you the real experience or something close to it of what it is to be a first responder. And that is a hot button topic these days, right? People yeah, are there interested. There are a lot of yeah. shows, but very few actually take the time and the focus to do how unsatisfying and dangerous and dramatic in a not neatly wrapped up way that job can be. And uh, tell me a little bit about finding that tone, finding you know the research that goes into it, the the, the way that you make sure that the show feels real. Well, we had an amazing uh, original show done in French, which uh, laid the groundwork for us and also built a relationship with the Montreal Police that we right. keep going to this day. Right. And in a lot of ways now we're doing stories that are very um, close to real experiences in Montreal that, that we're discovering out of that relationship. Do we have questions from the assembled press? I can't see yet, yeah, right there, go ahead. Hey Bruce, do you have any news on when, when the next season is going to air on Bravo? Spring. <laughs> That's what it says, but you know, maybe now that now that they can say we're the uh, we're the best drama in Canada, maybe uh, that date will be coming. <laughs> oh yeah, season three is a, a an incredible journey for our um, our our entire squad. This year, there are changes, there are surprises, and uh, it's a season that builds to a quite incredible uh, uh, final third. So it, to stick with it, it just gets better and better. And uh, other uh, questions? 
it's time for you to go celebrate. Uh, congratulations on all the awards. Jacob, you're getting to be an old hand at award shows. Yeah. Do you enjoy them? Well, it's quite fun getting to do this stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And because, I mean, I get to, you know, hold cool trophies like this, so I gotta say it's pretty fun. Yeah, it is pretty fun. And uh, do your friends, like your, your other kids your age, do they know what you do? Do they understand? They understand that I'm an actor and, you know, I'm famous. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's what they think, but I'm not that famous. Right. Did they treat you differently? No, not really. No. Um, they, don't really, they, don't, they don't really watch my movie. You know, they don't really, they don't really watch, they can't really, wa they can't watch Room. Right. You know, because that's. They're not old enough to watch. They're not it. old enough. Yeah. And they'll be like. Yeah. That's right. The whole right. time. It's not right. <laughs> and uh, and what does winning this award mean for you tonight? It means pretty cool stuff. <laughs> I mean, this is a good one to the collection. It's probably, it's probably and, the tallest one. Well, yeah, and, and where heaviest. where do you keep them? Beside my William Falcon. Yeah, yeah. That's right. <laughs> and uh, Emma, uh, you're just, uh, this is, I mean, we talked earlier, but this must be uh, a very exciting night nine. for you. We got nine. Unbelievable, awards. right? <laughs> the producer's happy. As you know, everyone's happy about yeah. that, I yeah. think. Yeah. yeah. I have a feeling there's some champagne in your future, in the very near future. Uh, do we have uh, questions from the uh, assembled press? Yeah, go ahead. Just speak up, yeah, yeah. at this point. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Emma. Um, so, Emma, you were very involved in the process, obviously, writing the book and then writing the screenplay. Um, when you first got to meet Jacob, did you know right away that you had your Jack? Even before I met him, yes. I saw video clips of lots of boys, and Jacob's were just outstanding. He seemed so at ease and relaxed and playful, and I remember he you know, asked to do some of the voiceovers immediately. So I thought, yes, we have our Jack. Thank God, because everything depended on that. And then, uh, Jacob, did you get a chance to uh, read the book of Room? Or was it not no. really quite ready to... I didn't really read the book. Okay. I'm not. I'm not really a reader. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even read the Harry Potter's or the Hobbits or the Lord of the Rings. I just watch them now because they're made out because the, a movie made them. Yeah. Uh, any other questions? Yeah, Maury. Sure. Hey, Jacob. Good to see you again. See you too. Um, what's cooler, winning this award or staying up past your bedtime? Ah, uh, winning this award. Because that's the whole reason I'm staying up high to my bedtime. <laughs> Any other questions? Yeah, go ahead. This is the final award. Pretty much we're done on that season. You made it through. Congratulations. What do you have to tell? What, what last thing do you have to say to your life? Uh, hopefully we'll work together again. On that note, we'll wrap it up. Thank you all, guys. Thank you for coming this way. <laughs>